everyone, and welcome to NIFA Photo Events. Today, we are also very happy to welcome Luana, uh, Luana Shu. And um, Luana was fairly recently a student at NIFA, and we're very proud to present her work today. Luana is nothing less than a powerhouse of creative energy moving easily from actor, director, and screenwriter to photographer and videographer. Relentless in her devotion to photography, she is a dynamo always ready to embrace all opportunities with curiosity and enthusiasm. No wonder that while a student at NIFA, Luana was even an inspiration to her teachers. She continues her journey today working as a photojournalist part-time while juggling shoots for her commercial and fashion clients based around Europe and the US. She says, my work focuses on the diversity inherent in art itself and on creating worlds based on themes that include a variety of subjects, stories, and cultural backgrounds. She says, it's my responsibility as an artist to encourage and empower people to be who they are. So now, Luana, please join us. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so Great much, Nancy, you. for your words. You're welcome. Sorry about the late hour. It's 11 o'clock in Romania. Indeed. It's not late. It's perfectly fine. Uh, I'm really nervous because I'm in front of the people I respect so much, my teachers, and they've been everything to me for the year that I was at NIFA. And after I graduated, they, they became my friends and my inspiration as well. So Thank you so much for inviting me. It means a lot. And I haven't seen some of them for so long and this feels amazing. So I shall start uh, with the presentation. This is the first time I gather work and put everything together in for the, for the past year or past maybe two years. So it's quite overwhelming to see. So I am a portrait, fashion and narrative photographer. My work mo ma mainly focuses on, you know, a subject, diverse subject, and telling stories through photography. I was always believed that um, I like to call him the art director of my own world. I believe that having a world that's aspiring to you is the main source of your inspiration. I never thought that there's any chance for me to be out of inspiration or or have lack of inspiration or have a, a blank space in my life if I continue to feed my whole my own world with uh, elements that I can bring then into my art, into my photography. Because my background is in acting, uh, I've always been a performer since I was very, very young. So I am my first subject. So every time I, I try something new, I will try on myself. I you know, actors have the fourth wall and I always believed in the fourth wall. Even though I'm a photographer and I'm the person behind the camera, I can jump in front of the camera every time, anytime, because it feels like I put my actor vest and actor cape and I become, I become the subject. It's the way I practice, it's the way I gain confidence. And uh, it's, it's like a daily practice. Um, my photography is really diverse and even though while I was studying I, at NIFA, I tried to define myself. I realized with time that trying to define yourself so soon, um, it will limit uh, your experiences. So as soon as I graduated, I stopped calling myself a specific kind of artist and I just said yes to all the opportunities that came into my life. For example, in this photo, this is a DJ, a girl that I found on Instagram and I messaged her because I was very intrigued by her looks. And this dog, uh, this Doberman I saw on the street in Brooklyn, I stopped, I was biking, I stopped. I asked the owner of the dog if they can, can come by my place. And my place um, after I graduated in IFA became a studio. I tried to invest as much as possible in a space where I can create with my friends. That was the main thing. And then if work will come after, it's just a, it will be like a natural rhythm. But 
that was the place where I gathered people to create with no limits or boundaries or or fear of making a mistake. There was no such thing. Um, so as I said, no limits, no anything, <laughs> even though I call myself of a portrait photographer, pers a people person. <laughs> I do all types of types of things and things that you cannot even I, I didn't expect. For example, this was a job for a restaurant in Upper West Side that got into Forbes twice. Also, there's a picture in Forbes that I don't even I hate it. I didn't even put it. I can't believe my first feature in Forbes is with a photo that I hate. Anyway, things happen. <laughs> Also, because I, as I mentioned, uh, my experience with photography is mainly um, based on people in my life. I truly, truly love the people in my life. And on my birthday or any type of event, I invite people over to the studio and we create based on a theme that I give them. Usually I give them a script the night before, they read, they understand the terms of the creative space they will enter. And I think, I don't know, we are all so immersed and um, together in this in this experience that no one questions, everybody just acts on it. And that's the basis of my art. And that's the basis of acting in general. And I will keep going back to acting because I work as a director on set. And this is a set that, you know, I created in my in my space, in my everyday space, basically. But everybody respected it and treated it as if it's a stage. So um, because of this acting background, I will always approach any type of shoot with people as if it's a performance and I will behave as if this is a, a set, not a set you walk and you think, okay, uh, I'm done, it's the next job. It's a set that might change something in you or you will have an experience. It's very important to me to always have experiences. But as I said, my background is in performing arts. I was a ballroom dancer for seven or eight years. Dancing was my life. I thought I'm going to become a champion and, and represent Romania at the world national dance, but I didn't uh, because acting came into my life and I did acting school. And that's by after I graduated acting school, uh, I worked in a theater, in the National Theater, for about a year. And then I decided that I want to uh, become better. So I moved to America. And that's when um, I, I, I started uh, studying acting at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York. It's a, an acting conservatory. It's focused on acting entirely. And I graduated in 2020, which was an absolute terrible year to be an actor, even though I, I was hired in an off-Broadway uh, theater and I worked with them for a year. And at that time in 2020, there were a lot of opportunities coming and all of them were on Zoom as we are right now, really. And that's when I met a photographer that was doing a documentary. His name is Alistair Morrison. Uh, and that was the first time I asked a professional photographer what do you think about my photography? Because by that time I was still doing photography. It was not something that I would um, show to people as much, but he was the one that I asked and he said, um, why you photographed what you photographed? When you answer your question, then you can move on to the next one. And uh, that's when I continued <laughs> asking questions and still tried to pursue acting as much as possible. It was still very difficult times. Um, still self-portraiture was in my life. I was auditioning all the time. And then when I felt I'm ready, I started to study photography at NIFA. But as I said, characters are always in my life. I escape in this uh, world of characters I build because of acting and because of performing arts and because I'm very used to be on stage and in front of people, I'm very comfortable. Um, I create these characters in the comfort of my bedroom <laughs> and they can be judged, they can be hated, they can be loved, I don't care. I'm protected by the fourth wall as we call it in acting. But that took me to a a, a place where I started to photograph performers and dancers and actors because of my background I started to be uh, much more in 
touch with my former classmates from from American Academy of Dramatic Arts, and they started to reach me out for portraits and photographs. And some of them continued pursuing acting, so I was their main photographer. I I photographed sets, I photographed theater shows. As you see, this is a this is a movie done in New York. Um, and I got to be behind the scenes and have an experience that maybe it would have been different if I was in front of the camera. I never even for a second, as soon as I started my photography career, never even for a second felt like I'm missing out that I'm not in front of camera. I was living in the present moment and taking everything in from the set itself. And some moments, to be very honest, I was so happy I'm not the actor because in this movie, this actor was thrown in the water in October and he was freezing. And I was capturing that moment happily, but thank God I wasn't that actor. <laughs> other than that, it was stage performances. I got to see uh, other movie sets in locations I never dreamed to be. This is a, an abandoned hospital in Brooklyn. Um, and then with the photos that I've done, I appeared and being credited on IMDb several times. I traveled to LA to photograph the biggest movie set I've ever seen before. And I saw how LA industry works with movies. Um, it's quite an adventure to be behind the camera. And it's also quite an adventure to be in front of the camera. It's like a double personality for me. I, I can change, but as a photographer and director, I personally enjoy to be here for a while because it helped me um, become a much more confident woman. Um, I feel like there is nothing that can put me down right now because of the confidence that photography gave me and the control that I have in my own world. As an actor, it wasn't like that ever. Uh, other people would tell me how to look, how to appear, how to talk, how to behave. But in photography, it's not like that. You're in full control of who you are and what you want to say. That's the beauty of it. This is another photo shoot that was done in my humble studio with my friends. Um, also, that's the beauty of it. I would also make friends from, from these personal projects that I had in the past years because I would cast and call on Instagram um, or going backstage, which is a tool I use, I used to use as a photo, as a as an actor. <laughs> I would go on backstage and search for the type of people that I want to have in my photos, and I would find them and cast them, and I would tell them this is a personal project, or if it was a paid project, I would pay them exactly as they would need, and it it was an adventure, and it still is an adventure. Um, Coming back uh, from America, I now I'm in Europe for the past six or se six months, I think. I thought it would be a, a slight journey, but actually, as soon as I arrived, a lot of fashion projects started to come up for me. So for international students that say that going back to your country will be, I don't know, um, maybe a step back. It's really not true, and I'm here to say that confidently. When you come back from America or New York and you go back to your country, um, United States gives you so much confidence that when you're in your country, doesn't matter the size of that country is, you will have something extra than uh, people in the industry that never left maybe the country. This is a project I'm extremely, extremely proud of. Uh, it was the first um, art fair in Romania, and it was a collaboration with Epson, the a printing brand. Um, it was the first international market of art. And there were more than 30, more than 40 artists. Um, and it was my first art fair that I've ever been. I always wanted to go be an alley, but I've never got the chance. And I got the chance here to have a place and create a space and photograph more than a thousand people. I stopped counting really, because after a while, after it was 10 days of work. Every day we would have <laughs> a lot of people. And the first day was the most and it just went by. And what we did was we uh, used traditional photography. We created a space, a little set, 
um, we use traditional photography and AI mixed. Um, and based on a prompt, people would choose. I would because it was an art fair. We we use prompts, uh, art occurrence, for example, Renaissance or a pop art or um, expressionism, impressionism, anything they would want, they would choose, and it would be mixed with their photograph in AI, and end up with that. It would be a surreal maybe version of themselves. Some of them would be. Uh, some of them were actually really intrigued by it and we had very deep conversations about it and where the art is moving on and how we were the only place um, in that art fair with so many artists that talked about artificial intelligence, which was something surprising to me. But it was interesting and some of them would be scared off and they would uh, say that I'm not a good photographer if I go to AI or how dare I to um, talk about artificial intelligence already. And I kept saying that <laughs> I'm coming from New York and New York is such a progressive place. It always has been like that. And the conversations we have today in Romania have been done in New York last year, maybe. Um, so yeah, there will be fights, there will be not, there will be uh, good conversations, so on and so forth. But it was a good project and I'm I'm left with uh, many, many portraits and I met thousands of people I will always, always cherish. In my, in my uh, adventure as a photographer, I like to call it adventure because it's less pressure to be successful or not. I don't even know what successful means really, but moving on, I took my camera everywhere. I wanted to capture a story and have people um, being immortalized, immortal really. So I always had this urge to um, um, let people be who they are and uh, have a conversation every time we photograph have a, a moment where we agree on a storyline instead of um instead of the simplicity of of just sitting I much better provoke the person much better have it step out of the comfort zone in another sense not being uncomfortable but as a performer on stage when you're in front of camera you agree to be captured you also agree to be on to to shift a little bit to try something else that will stay like that forever i think that's a beautiful thought also in in new york i met a, a few artists and this was a cover that i'm very proud of of a um an artist from lebanon he's incredible and we talked a lot about losing your background while moving in America and that really um, made me think since he was in America for so long and we photographed we had conversations about his uh, cover and after we photographed it and meanwhile we photographed it we talked about heritage and heritage and what it means to keep your background very close to yourself as an artist never lose that and being in a world, being in America where you're uh, bombarded <laughs> by so much information and experiences, you might forget um, your roots. You might forget where you exactly came from. So for me, it was always times where I would stop, um, maybe touch my traditional national suit or dress in my national suit and and talk in my language, listen to the music uh, in my language and and remember exactly what I want to say w what's the depth in my core of my story that will be the only thing that will make me unique in this art world because we're so many out there I was always fascinated by um, Greek mythology and stories and also comes from theater because the roots of theater are coming from Greece and um, I always study that and every time I would have the chance to do a personal project based on gods I would I would definitely take that chance I will never stop it will be a forever project for me um, also 
talking about artists and different styles. So these photos are very different from each other. And that's the point of what I'm trying to say. I never um, made my experience small. I always said, I can do anything. I can, I can, I can mix and match. I can learn new, new tools. Um, this is an artist from LA. Um, we photographed for her cover album. This is a wig she spent thousands of dollars on and she didn't get the chance to photograph it yet. And she always told me like she, she, she doesn't know what to wear. She doesn't know what to add on it. So because I'm used to work in the dark and add light built, built in the dark, I said, be completely naked and just wear your most important um, <laughs> um, accessory. And that was her wig. The, the process of my work is really diverse. I love to, to, to work with a team of people. And here in, in Europe, mostly, I have people I can count on entirely. Makeup, makeup is such an important uh, thing for me, such an important tool uh, to use. That's also because I trust the artist that, and I don't even like to call her a makeup artist, the, the person I work with. She she's a visual artist too, um, she's a plastic artist and she's a makeup artist. <laughs> she is the one I do most of co personal projects with in Romania, and this is one of the projects I'm really really proud of. Um, I like to always invite people in the studio here in Romania I don't have a studio but at the same time people were very kind with me and I got studios from other photographers because coming from New York from this beautiful school that I came and having this always ongoing posting on social media and telling people I'm in a continuous working mode I never took a moment off uh, from social media and because I knew it's a tool that will promote me and it will continue uh, feeding um, people and will make them understand I'm always working and I'm always open to collaborate. Um, I got invited in London and by a photographer, the same photographer I did a documentary in 2020, Alistair Morrison. Um, he invited me and said, I want to see how you manage to do of shoot from nothing and tell me a story and that's when I did this story um in his garden actually because also talking about inspiration and people that are inspiring I believe I I believe that if I have in my life people that continue to give me visual information uh give me elements that I can use in my art it will be a non-stop need to work um that being said it's an it, that doesn't mean i will always look for interesting people that have i don't know tattoos on their faces and weird haircuts but that means i will continue to feed this uh, energy with the exterior and also the interior that's mostly based on self portraits this is a i'm for example <laughs> Because here in uh, Romania, I don't have a studio as I have in Brooklyn. I just have my camera. And this is a very good example of a photograph that was done in front of a window. Uh, used the mirror as a reflection for the light and just trusted the makeup artist and the model. And we did this in the makeup artist apartment. We didn't do this because someone asked us to do it. We didn't do it because we highly prepared for it and it was a mass production. We did it because it was a need for us to get together and try something new and learn something new and make a mistake even. Because maybe we did a few, of course. But it, it was this idea of gathering in a room and have a bigger purpose than just ourselves. It was this collective energy that I don't, I don't imagine myself living without. I, yeah, this is another fashion shoot. This shoot was, I think, one of the most challenging shoots I've ever worked with because there were 10 models from the most important um, modeling agency here in Romania. 
and they were assigned to three photographers, were three photographers, no, four photographers in this challenge. And the models were assigned to us and we had to basically compete with each other and create work with no assistance, not more lighting. There was just one part of the studio that could be used with strobes and just create. And this kind of moments, you that this kind of moments I use everything that I watch, listen, read. I'm sorry, there's a storm. <laughs> there's a big, big storm in uh, right now. Um, this is the moment that everything that I have, I use and put it into the work. High pressure moments. Another photo shoot that was done with the same need um, just to come in a room and create something new. I work with the same team. Here in Romania, I work with a stylist that always comes in with interesting pieces and the same makeup artist that me and the makeup artist, we have a very special relationship. We always talk beforehand. Uh, we agree about the looks and then the stylist come on, comes on and sees what we agreed on. And then the shoot goes on. <laughs> and I had to mention something here because I'm a big, big advocate of you don't need much to create beautiful work. So I'll read it. I forgot to mention it. Everywhere, everything was done behind the block in Drumutabre, which, by the way, is a very ugly place in Bucharest, full of mafia and nasty people. So never tell me that you definitely need exquisite location to do good work because I'm going to come for you and prove that you don't. It is about creativity and ingenuity and what you can do with any space, anywhere, no matter circumstances. That being said, it's your time. Go and create with your friends. Yeah, for real. I will always, always choose people I'm getting along with or are um, interesting and creative and just full of desire um, I will always choose them instead of going to the famous um, people with reputation and, and stuff like that. I'm much better take that road. That this is another project, uh, another photograph from that um, project with the models. I don't enjoy the fashion world. I enjoy fashion photography. But I'm completely aware that, and I've seen that recently, especially since coming back to Europe, that the fashion world is not a place for me as I'm not the person for the fashion world. I will do fashion photography when and in a comfort, comfortable space, but the fashion world in itself is not a place I want to be part of because there are too many dark situations that are happening and you as a photographer you assist and you you see them and I'm not willing to um, watch young models uh, being pushed into to, to their limits I've seen that in this shoot for example this is a 16 year old boy and I watched him being pushed to do things that he didn't really want it to do and comfortable with, with the idea that this is the world right now. If you want to be successful, you have to do this. And I've heard that even as an actress, uh, people are telling me that I have to mingle and uh, uh, focus on connections to be successful. And that was always the part that I really... I it never related to me. To me, it was always the hard work that would bring me to the places that I think I and I hope I'll be. But I don't, uh, I never, I, and I will never like this idea of mingling and wasting time and listening to other people's stories that are maybe important and give you chances instead of being in your studio or work and promote it as much as you can. Invest the time and knowledge and education and quality time with your art instead of being outside and looking for confirmation from strangers. Um, most, of, most of the time, um, not most of the time, but some, some important or big chunk of time I spent researching different 
topics and then I include them into my art. And this was a series of photographs I've done last summer based on dreams. I was reading about dreams and what Nietzsche is uh, talking about and Freud. Uh, so it was basically psychoanalysis and psychology. And I integrate into my photography. The dream series is the way I transcribe this um, different this this world reality and our dream unconscious world and try to mix them into a photo series it was a it was a great time because while I was photographing um, I made a bed I lit the candles and I put the music that I know will be very calming and the process of the shoot was um, very very relaxing and and extremely it had a specific depth that I will always cherish forever. This is another shoot done with the team that I always work with in Romania. Here, um, the fashion world is predominantly the most, um, is the king in photography. Fine art, you cannot find it as much. Um, so as much as I would love to, to integrate myself to find our world in the future. I know there's still so much to understand. Uh, so I I moved and shifted completely towards fashion photography while I'm in Europe. And I love I love doing I love doing what I do right now and the people I meet because it mostly young people they're curious and not afraid to to make mistakes and do it all over again and learn. So most of the people that I work with, they they end up being my friends <laughs> and we keep in touch always. This is the album, um, the artist with the album. Also, I, as you can see, this is a, a shoot that's highly imperfect. I, I'm not... Um, so much on retouch and making everything perfect i'm not so much on on uh continuing this um idea of perfection on women or men yet in the fashion world so people look in a specific way but i'm not retouching my photos almost at all um i, I like to show imperfections and i like to show <laughs> life as it is well here this is a project that I'm quite proud of um I got the studio from a, an important photographer here in Europe and he said Luana this is the studio I want to see what you can do with an empty space ask your friends to come over and let me watch how you do what you have you do and it was a lot of pressure because he was sitting in the back of the studio watching me and I I did what I had to do. I forgot that he ever was there. And when I showed him the photos, he noticed that the people were dressed differently. And I said, well, Photoshop better. Photoshop has this new feature with AI. And I just uh, restylized the models with how I, I wanted it to be. But I didn't have that dress, definitely. I didn't have this leather cape. But thanks to AI, once again, I could have all these elements. Not very easy. And I just changed a little bit and made this shoot a little bit more interesting. For example, this leather dress blew my mind. I don't think I will ever be able to find such, <laughs> such dress here in this country, really. <laughs> so... Talking about style, at least I know how I can define myself. Um, I'm, I will always keep this drama in my, in my photography. It's something that I agreed with myself. Um, it's not specifically darkness or, um, but it's this the theatricality that I uh, integrated naturally because of my performing background and I will keep on forever, just make it better and better with every shoot, supposedly. But for example, this shoot was um, was from Macbeth, 
by William Shakespeare. Shakespeare is a, of a huge inspiration for me. I always go back to Shakespeare when I need to see how I could make many subjects in the room interact with each other in a, an interesting way, in a in a way that makes you think what's really happening. I go back on, on Shakespeare, mostly his King's play, Richard III, Henry IV, Macbeth, um, those kind of interactions, the royalty problems are the ones that have always been very intriguing to me. And I, I loved to integrate them into my work. Even in fashion, because fashion is not only about the clothes, it's also a story you'd say with those clothes. And that's Shakespeare for me, going back to him. Well, recently, I realized that the world is moving so fast and there's so many tools for photographers that the next level is to be a full, a complete visual person, that's video. And these are some screen grabs from um, fashion, commercial uh, uh, video that I did for a brand in New York, but I did it here in Romania. It's called Why Not Romania? And this was the idea of the client. <laughs> um, we filmed almost like half a night with the products. We had a storyline. And lucky here in Romania, because I have I know people and I, I'm friends with a lot of people. We even had a car, we, we could enter a club, we could we could use the cloth and clothing and just be me and the subject and my assistant and film and have no worries in the world. <laughs> but that being said, I am completely in love with journalism. I wasn't as in love with journalism as I before uh, in New York, not as much, but when I arrived in Romania, I knew that I would absolutely adore to tell stories that are not staged as I'm so used to do it. This was a project I've done in the Bronx. It was the first time I bar hopped in the Bronx with a friend of mine, well, that's also an actor. And the whole time we bar hopped <laughs> and he's introducing me to his culture, um, his, to his culture and his neighborhood and um, what it means to be, to grow up in the Bronx and have the life that he had. And um, I was photographing this experience mainly without him, noticing as much I didn't want him to feel like I'm um, staging him at all it was just me and him having a conversation and from time to time he would have ideas and be photograph me here let's do that let's meet this person that yeah <laughs> but yet fashion fashion comes back all the time and you always will but because I, I I go back to actors as my subject, I can ask them um, to be in a specific way that I know it's not something I would ask someone on the street. It's a specific understanding of the depth of my question of what I ask them to do and why. And sometimes, most of the times, people don't ask me why I, I ask um uh, the shoot to be based on a specific team they they trust and I truly believe that a big um amount of my work is based on trust if it wasn't to be trust between me and the subject like a director with an actor or a producer with a musician this work would have never looked the way it does right now This is, for example, a project talking about trust that means a lot to me. It's about self-harm. And you can see on the back of the man, he has uh, these cuts. It's a, it's, a, it's a project that I will keep on going for years from now because it has this... Um, I, I have... Actually, I have... I don't want to talk a lot, a lot, a lot about it because it's still in the making, but it brought me the most meaningful experiences with people I've ever photographed. And um, I never saw 
so much intimacy in a in a subject as I've seen people that have actual scars that they've done themselves years after they healed from the trauma and doing them. But it's a matter of style, as I mentioned. I've always been uh, attracted to a specific darkness in the way things look. And this is another video. Uh, these are screen grabs from another music clip I've filmed in Romania for a Bronx artist, actually. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing much I can talk about. I wish I could uh, show you the clip itself. But I can't, it's not launched yet. Uh, journalism again, this was uh, the Caribbean parade. That was the first time someone shot a gun next to me. Um, it was an interesting experience. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful experience though. I've never seen so much color in one place ever. And this is when I arrived in Romania. I had my first journalist job. It was um, with the army and uh, little kids being dressed in traditional Romanian suit. And it was the first time I heard my anthem in maybe 10 years. And I cried like a baby. <laughs> and this is a sole project of mine. I didn't share as much. Um, it's with gypsy kids in Romania, in in my hometown, mostly. Um, the idea of gypsy is, I'm half gypsy, for example, and here in Romania, it's not something that I would say because it's so judged. But in America, I was not afraid to say that if I was asked, but people don't really care. But gypsy idea comes with this romantic, nomadic, interesting um bohemian vibe to it in reality it's not like that not 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 in my country gypsies are the most um put down um group of people here and the most and the people that suffer most is their kids and because of the lack of education and the lack of um help from the institutions they don't really know how to approach family life. So they end up having a lot of kids um, and people are suffering a lot. And um, I was welcomed in their community because I understand some of their language in a specific language, the gypsy language. You cannot learn it from anywhere. <laughs> um, and they welcomed me in to photograph them. And it was quite an honor. This is a portrait of my parents that I cherish a lot because my parents are not very loving and every time I come home I try to capture their uh, relationship I believe it's part of the journalist need or <laughs> uh, this is also it's a screen grab from a, a film that I've done um, that I will share it someday, but the screen grab, um, th this image itself um, is the beginning of the movie. It's observing a family that has a lot of secrets between each other. And every time they come outside their house um, and have a cigarette or talk on the phone, they tell the truth. And as an ending, to it all. I hope it wasn't too much. There's definitely a lot of images. Um, this is um, also a, an image I cherish a lot. <laughs> and um, it was the this was the first day I arrived back in Europe, in Romania, after leaving New York six months ago. It was the beginning of my questions about what it means to document life in fashion, in journalism, in fine art, what it actually means so I took the train by myself a few times and uh, observed the space and the people in it and that is that I hope uh, this uh, conversation not conversation <laughs> this talk was uh, inspiring to you I hope um, what I said um, 
you I hope you'll take a few things that I've said because I also heard them from other people I have my I have people I go back to when I, I had lack of inspiration I love to listen to Nick Knight for example talking about art um, and some things I learned from him I love to listen to Vivian to David to Nancy to to Chris to everybody from Knife Art and uh, as long as we have people like that in our lives and as long as we have the internet, we'll never be out of inspiration. And the most, most important thing is to continue working because I truly don't think you can evolve or become a better artist if you don't do it every day. They talk about 10,000 hours to become a professional. Yeah, and you become a professional, then what? <laughs> you have to keep even be bigger and better and and stronger and work harder it's an everyday I call them a workout so when I do portraits to myself it's like working out so I suggest you to try working out for your profession and the thing you love most <laughs> I think I'm done <laughs> hey Luana thank you so much for your talk it was really I think very inspiring um I'm also quite honored to be listed in amongst the people that you like to connect with and talk with. Um, hello, everyone. I'm David Major. I chair the photography department here at the New York Film Academy. Um, I'm going to ask you guys, the attendees, if you have questions, please don't hesitate. Use the Q&A function that's you'll find at the bottom of your screen. Um, and Lana, why don't you stop sharing your screen for mm -hmm. now? And let's just keep the conversation going. We have a few questions already put in. Um, I have a couple of questions for you, too. And, and I want to start with kind of what you ended with um one of the things are you still there you were frozen for a sec. okay sorry um one of the things you just said about working every day doing those workouts and and continuing to push and push and push yourself you know this this is something that you showed an incredible you know aptitude for even when you first started school and from coming from acting into photography and utilizing the networks you had in place with actors and using that in your photography. I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about that process and what those connections and how those connections really help you to keep that work going. Um, well, see, even before this talk, I did a, because I put makeup on. It's not something that I want to do every day. So it's like a chance for me to work out something, right? So if I want to, rehearse skin retouch now I have makeup on and I take a photo I take a photo I put it in photoshop and I rehearse it on myself I much better make mistakes on myself than on a client on a subject that I, I they give me their trust so for me it's a daily it's a daily um it's a daily thing I do it all the time I I photograph every day and some people some people it would be like, but there's so much work. Don't you think it's too much? Don't you get you get gonna get tired of it? There's no way I can get tired of it if I chose and I assumed this is this is a commitment. It's it was with acting the same thing. It was a commitment. I I knew that it would be an because we're artists, we're not the nine to five kind of people. So we're not uh, uh, going to a job and having a someone to tell us what to do. We we are free. So that comes a great responsibility. And I assumed that to myself from very young age. I was like, okay, I have to be an athlete in everything I do. That doesn't mean it's like a, a competition all the time, but that means um, it has to be an everyday. There's not 10,000 hours. There's not 3,000 hours. It's <laughs> way more hours than, than before. And then when I go in front of my clients, I'm ready. I, do you want that? I can do that. Do you want this? Oh, I can do that too. You want it? What? Floating in the air? I can do that. I I can show you. I did it. Oh my! I have the proof. I I can do anything you ask me. So that's basically. Mm, cool. That's great. And I I totally agree. You know, you've got to keep keep working it out. And I love that you try stuff on yourself and you just photograph every day. I mean, I think that's pretty key to growing as an artist, whether you're working commercially or not, right? It's, that's, I think, the key. Um, I'm going to back up to stuff you talked about at the beginning of your, your talk, where you were talking about working with actors and giving them the terms of the creative space and then photographing them within that space and within those terms. 
I guess I'm curious in your practice with that. So you have, I don't know, a handful of actors, you give them the story, you give them each a script, you give them the terms of the creative space, like you called it. While you're there, how much are you directing and how much are you observing and photographing? Like, what is the difference and what's the balance there for you? Mm, yeah, well, it's that's awesome. I actually thought about it because it, it was trial and error. The first time that I did it was actually for an IFA project where I gave total freedom of the people for 45 minutes. And it was not a mess. Things were broken. Glasses were shattered. The table was turned. It was crazy. So I was like, okay, I think I can do it. I think I have to control. So next time I did it on levels. So it was level one, level two, level three of intensity because I could feel the team, the theme that I would choose would be so intense that people would need to connect with each other in such way that it's not to impress me or impress anybody on the side because not all the time, 15 people would be on set. It would be like six, right? But they would need to connect in such way. It was an energy in a room. And if I wasn't to give the levels, it would just be full power from the first, first get-go and it would burn out. So I would have to control them. And from the side, I would tell them, okay, grow a little bit more, go a little bit more. And then the third time and the fourth time, the fifth time, I realized I can add more elements. It would be episodes, it would be tableau, it would be like scenes. And scenes have an arch. And that's 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 something in, in acting. We have a scene, an improvisation scene. It's exactly the same thing. We go on set and we start from point zero. We don't know nothing about each other. What we know is unspoken. We start from point zero. It's like a fire burning and it keeps growing. And it's like an arch. It keeps the it touches the climax or the cathartic moment. And then we have to go down in order to be a, a, a complete and a good scene. And people understood that we would have that conversation beforehand. Um, and professional or not, there would be models as well that were, are not actors. And we would have this conversation and would understand where where to grow and where to go back in order not to feel uh, unfulfilled because I, I'm i observing their experience and I'm content, but I'm really, really into having the, the subject, having an experience in itself and being content and not feel like they gave too much or they gave too little. little. As long as they have the arch, they gave just enough. Um, yeah. Interesting. And so do you employ that idea say, when you're doing a passion shoot as well? Is that the same approach? And how do you take, you know, you're hired to do a shoot, your clients have specific ideas on what they want, right? So how do you incorporate their ideas into this process and, you know, get the sort of freedom of expression from your models and be able to give your own direction and what the client needs and Talk, can you talk a little bit about that process? Yeah, absolutely. For example, this summer I got on the biggest project I've done so far. There's like seven shoots I have to accomplish. I already done three of them. It's a it's a brand they invested a lot of money and they keep they keep telling me that, which is something that I not don't really want to know. And um, there's a lot of pressure. And they they firstly came with this big uh big 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 pdf with the the board and everything that i was supposed to follow and they were on set with me obviously um and then they realized that if we keep on the board which would be pinterest images or movie scenes or they hired me first of all for the fact that i'm a narrative person and i i incorporate acting into my um into my shoot so they trusted me on that but they still wanted to make it fashion obviously and they, they realized half the shoot that there's no way I can um, be like the photographer they show me. And there's, there's not something I said, I, I talk in the meetings. I, I can't be Stephen Klein. You're, you're giving me a Stephen Klein. I'm, I'm not Stephen Klein. <laughs> um, but in the day of the shoot, they realized while being next to me. And because they see that the subjects having a moment of fulfillment and, and me, and we have this connection, most of the time they just trust and they let it happen. And at the end, they, they see the photos and they're like, yeah, you're right. The, the very specific photos in the mood board, what we thought we wanted was actually not, we, you did it better than we thought we wanted because that's imagination. You, 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 we think like this really, but when at the end it's actually abroad and that's mostly based on the photographer subject relationship. 
so great that they could recognize that. I guess just to challenge you on that, have you worked with clients that don't see it that way where you mm -hmm. then feel stymied in your approach where you've got to go, okay, that's the client. I need to switch it around and, and just deliver what they're interested in. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I happened to me and that's the, I can, I want to learn how to do it all um, idea came because for example, working with rappers, I'm not even listening to rap. <laughs> okay. And they, maybe I don't say that in the, on the get go, but after a few minutes, they're like, <laughs> yeah. And they're like, but you think you can do this? I'm like, yeah, I can do this. And I do it. And they're like, okay, it has to be more, I don't know. So one of the clients be like, Luana has to be more from the hood. And I'm like, oh my God, we do not have a hood in Romania in general. <laughs> Damn. So I watched movies and I, and I documented myself and I integrated myself in the world that he was asking me and I redone it and then it was okay. But that meant for me to extra learn something or understand the world that I'm not part of to tell that story. It's, it, yeah, I just did it all over again. And I'm willing to, to do all over again as much as, much as needed uh, until I feel like I'm fully accomplished. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. I think that's an incredible quality that you carry with you. I mean, you saw that while you were in school here too, of just the, I have this idea, I need to make it happen. I'm just going to keep doing it and keep going until I get it, you know? Um, yeah. And I, again, that's something that I think all of our listeners and all of our students should really take to heart that it's almost never one and done, right? You've got to just keep trying and keep trying and keep trying and pushing yourself to attain the, you know, the results that you were, you originally set out for. That's mm. really cool. Um, oh. I'm going to go to the Q&A. We have a couple of questions here for you. Um, this is from Jackie. Right? And she's asking, you often credit a lighting designer in your images. What kind of direction do you tend to give your lighting design? Yeah, I I worked very closely with someone. Um, his name is Paul. We, we worked in a very close relationship in Brooklyn, in the studio. And... It was, we would meet beforehand and uh, two hours before the photo shoot and would have this conversation about uh, darkness and light, really. Because we would start from scratch, my studio is in a basement, so it would be completely fully dark. And we would agree from the beginning, okay, it's fully dark. What do, what do What's the story? How many characters you have in the space? That would be the conversation. Uh, what's their relationship? Um, because that would mean cold or um, warm light. And um, give me uh, the story, the story in itself for us to be able to light it. And we would have this conversation. Then on set, really, I would just, uh, inst directing the models, really, and uh, the light person that would be like, okay, I need more on his on the cheek. Lift it up a little bit. It would be a continuous. And the more <laughs> sometimes the models would think, lift it up, and I would mean the light. But the chaos is part of the process. And um, that kind of story doesn't stop. I start. I don't go to the bathroom for four hours or whatever until I finish. <laughs> so it would be this conversation. Okay, lift it a bit. Put it like more red. No red. No too green. Too green. I'm too yellow. Stop that. <laughs> yeah would look like that <laughs> right. right again you know i think we can all take a lesson from you in terms of that level of intensity and just even if we the rest of us could take 10 percent of the intensity that you bring to the table we'd be in great shape so pretty amazing i have um, a funny story about that uh, an acting teacher of mine was was um in acting class, you're not allowed to go to the bathroom or disturb the person that's working in front of you. And he'd be like, okay, so many people ask you to go to the bathroom. Just call me uh, Spielberg next time you want to go to the bathroom. And we were like, oh, pfft, whatever. And we sit down and I wanted to go and I realized, Mr. Sp There's something I would never say to Spielberg <laughs> if I can go to the bathroom. That's ridiculous. So no one asked the bathroom since <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's a good tip maybe all the teachers listening here we should call ourselves spielberg at the beginning of this semester so you know <laughs> <laughs> um so there's a question um here by uh, kj anderson and it touches on your ai experience and i think that's a really important one to start talking about because it's really you know it's a huge topic certainly in education and i think in the rest of the world about 
how are we all going to start living with and incorporating AI if we're going to in what that kind of looks like. Um, so really interesting that you did that project with Epson. And were they involved in the AI part of it with you too, or was that sort of your approach or? Um, we needed Epson because it was an art fair and we were like, okay, there's, it has to, people have to leave with something. Yeah. And Epson came and gave us the printer, very great help and uh, paper that, that was, uh, but other than that, it was just uh, me and my colleague. It was another photographer who did it together because there were too many people for me to be by myself for sure. Um, the experience with AI was so... Um, when I said the conversation that were in New York last year happened then for me, it was mind-blowing because I remember talking about AI a year before. And in New York, people would be so open and willing to integrate that in, in their work. And I'm sure NAFA already has mid-journey and DALI and whatever's needed to just make us improve and just move on with this wave and learn. In Romania, it's the exact opposite. So I would have so many people that would be like, aren't you afraid you're going to lose your job? I'm working as we speak. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> or, you know, um, don't you think it's too fake? Too fake? You're kidding me? This world is around us are people that are fake, literally, with like it's plastic surgery I don't know what you're talking about fake and that's already a style in itself or I would get things like um uh, <laughs> it's ugly it's scary it's like but it's it's in a process this is something that people are working as we speak I was at the fair and mid-journey updated another version while I was working on something and I was thinking isn't that mind blowing <laughs> and how fast everything turns and if we are against it, it would, would be a wave that would eat us as visual artists. You know, Nick Knight, I was listening to a talk with him talk about artificial intelligence. And he said, I can't call myself just, I can't call myself a photographer anymore. And it would be a shame just to say that because I do 3D printing and I do this, um, I use artificial intelligence and I do so many things. I call myself an image maker much better because there's so many other things I integrate into my into my photography. Mm -hmm. so I said That's the same cool. thing to one of the guys. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that makes sense, especially for you in terms of how many different elements you bring in and from all the different areas that you learned and studied and worked on and the research you continue to do. Um, are you still incorporating AI into your own personal practice? Is that part of what yeah. you're doing also? I do, I do. And for example, what Photoshop did I'm sure you all know, it's so helpful because being on set um, and rushed and have so many people around you that want things and, and listen to, you miss shots, you make it a little like this, you cut a little bit of something. And I, I use Photoshop to generate what I, I made a mistake. That's something. Um, and I also, I do use uh, Mid Journey. Sometimes I, I tried in the past to generate backgrounds, but there's not something I'm that curious, but I would, I would use artificial intelligence, of course. Cool. I mean, I guess it's incorporating new tools as they're developing, right? I mean, how different is that? There's, especially if we're talking about Photoshop beta, how different is that than using the retouching tools before it was in the AI, right? I mean, Absolutely. Isn't it mind blowing yeah. that you spend so many hours learning how to re replace the background and now it's two seconds? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Pretty amazing. Um, so let's let's talk about your journalistic approach to things a little bit too, because I feel like there's a really big difference in when you're talking about creating or as you said before, the terms of the creative space where you're giving scripts and you're giving direction and photographing that versus what you're looking at and dealing with with sort of the journalistic ideas um how, how do you sort of manage that just even in your own space like in your own head because with your journalism stuff the project on the gypsies and i remember that project quite well um you're finding imagery you're not creating the ideas and what's mm -hmm. happening there how do you sort of turn that switch for yourself what, what is that like to to get there um well i guess mm, 
I have to say this. When I think I young and uh in the fashion world, it's full of ego and me, 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 and what I can do and how good I can be and how blah 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 things I can have. That's the fashion world really. Especially if you're young. Um and in the journalistic world, it will be nothing about self. It will always be something about, it would always entirely be about the subject. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if I took that photo. It was important that, that the story was told. So um, it was a great practice. And it was like a, hum it was a humbling experience coming from the performing world where it's ego, so much ego and and uh, me self me world into this jour journalist journalism where it's it's not that it's just, just the story has to be told that doesn't matter what you do to to to, to say the story mm. okay yeah interesting mm, cool all right so we are a few minutes after five um and again i'm just going to ask folks if you have questions please drop into the q a uh, we have a few more minutes that we can keep chatting. Um, <laughs> I'm just looking at my notes. I had a couple other questions for you. Um, you talked a little bit about your approach to the fashion shooting, where you're, again, collaborating and you're coming up with the stories together with everybody involved. And I think that's a great, great approach. And you've seen that in your personal projects also. Um, how easy it is for you to sort of do that with stylists and makeup artists and models that you're working with on, in the fashion world is you just describe some stuff that could be potentially challenging dealing with shooting fashion how how well does that tend to go for you you know i never had any like i never i never had an experience where we didn't agree on something because i'm the kind of person that fully trust the the people that are chosen to be in the room if they're chosen by the client that means they're the best people they thought so it's not my place to question their work of course i had times with some makeup artists that i didn't choose a client did and i thought it was outrageous how terrible that looked but it was not my job to to say that so i i know my place it's it's on set it's when you're on set and uh, you're an actor or you're a personal assistant or a, you're a light or grip you do what you're meant to do it's not your job to have opinions you figure out afterwards how you deal with the problems you you had on set but but most 99 percent of the time the team agrees and uh it's just a, a respect towards each other even if it's a personal project unpaid fully on our money um it's uh, so much respect and people have opinions and they'll be like, I think we could go towards this direction a little bit for this outfit. And that would come from the stylist and I would fully agree. And the makeup artist would respect it and would do that. And then the makeup artist would be like, I want to paint the model right now, uh, red everywhere. And uh, we would do that. And we wouldn't use any clothes because it would get stained. And it would be a continuous conversation like in any relationship. Mm. Cool. We just got another question in the Q&A, which I think is a great one to end on. So I'm just going to read this to you. Um, any advice on what you said about not having to live in a beautiful place to be motivated to take pictures? So how do you motivate to take pictures everywhere? And how does your pre-production process or how is your pre-production in that case? I don't live in a beautiful place right now, for example. It looks pretty, but this is my room since I was seven so waking up in this room for example feels like hell to me sometimes because like where, wasn't i in america like what happened um so this is an example because it has a lot of trauma too when you're a kid a lot of things that happen so i i definitely this is not inspiring to me but i create i create it with movies that i watch with books that i read with music how, how i listen to music and be outside a lot in nature in general and uh, be sur be surrounded by people that give me elements, as I said. Um, it's not only about the environment. It's not only about the the place. It's also the people that are telling you stories and feeding your imagination. It's very. When I was an actor, I would always, yeah, it's part of the method. For example, when you 
when you immerse into a character, you start um, researching for a character, you, you read about the specific period of time, you listen to that specific music from that time, you read about what happened politically speaking in that time. I do the same. If I if I choose to shoot Greek mythology, um, I I look at movies. I, I watch movies that are related to that. I try to find places that are similar, and that's challenging for my imagination. Um, and I and I do it all the time. It, it's really the shoot with the girl with the red with. It's done in the back of a communist block. Terrible looking. Um, and we realized that we're not allowed to use the location we planned to do. So we did it and it looked very beautiful fantasy garden, <laughs> which was not. Yeah. So cool. So thank you again, Milan. This was a pretty amazing, amazing talk. And I love seeing the breadth of your work that you showed to us. I'm so glad you had so much imagery to share and really quite diverse. Um, and I just you know, I am inspired by you and I hope our viewers are as well. Just your work ethic and what you bring to the table on every project you work on. I mean, it's really an incredible thing to sort of witness and watch. And I loved having you here as a student and watching your process. And I'm so excited that you're going to be back in New York in September. So please come and visit and hang out and do lots of stuff with us. So, And for attendees, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I hope you feel the same way that I did or that I do uh, rather, and uh, we'll see you at our next guest lecture. Luana, thank you so much. Nancy, thank you again. Thank um, you, Luana, we'll thank you soon. so much. Really, thank you. Yes. All right, all, have a great rest of the day. And Luana, it's bedtime, I guess, so we'll talk <laughs> to you soon. <laughs> nice to see you, David, thank you. Yeah, great to see you too. All right, take care, we'll talk soon. Bye. Bye all. Bye.